Hi and welcome back to a new video. Another video, another hardware launch. Today, AMD allows to publish benchmarks of the 9950X 3D, which is similar to the 7950X 3D, also some kind of a hybrid CPU. Hybrid CPU because we have two different types of CCDs on there. That's our typical AMD PCB with the big IO die in the center. And then one of these CCDs is a traditional Zen 5 CCD. And the other one is with the 3D V cache in addition, which gives us extra 64 megabyte of L3 cache. You could almost say that the 9700X and the 9800X 3D together had a baby and that's how the 9950X 3D was born. And that's what we will check out in today's video. Thermal Greasy Duronaut is our new high-end thermal paste and the successor of Cryonaut. It's even better performing, it is much easier to apply, it is cheaper and it's much more durable. That's where the name comes from. Especially if you're now maybe considering to buy a new PC, then I would highly recommend that you're looking into this thermal paste. So let's continue with this video. The MSRP for this CPU is supposed to be 700 US dollar or in Germany it's supposed to be just below 800 euros. Again, similar to all the GPU launches and also the previous 9800X 3D launch, it could very well be that the pricing in the end that we will see in the stores might be higher depending on supply and demand. Talking about supply, we will also supply again the 9950X 3D also in a deleted version again with warranty in the Thermal Grizzly store. That's also one of these CPUs. It will be a bit more expensive though simply because again we are giving two years warranty on it and if the CPU is more expensive for us in the purchasing we also have to yeah, increase the insurance price so it should be around a thousand uh, euros for this depending again if you have to pay VAT or not. The 9950X 3D benefits from the second generation AMD 3D V cache, same as the 9800X 3D. That means we will see a lot lower temperatures and it's also unlocked for overclocking, which is just absolutely amazing and awesome. And I'm already looking forward to do an extra video for overclocking and also deleting. Even though I have the CPU here, I personally didn't overclock or like delete the CPU yet. That was somebody else from Grizzly. So that's something I want to look into in a separate video. What I did do though is retesting the Intel 285K because it's almost half year since their launch and while the CPU was rather disappointing at launch, some time passed and Intel multiple times said that they kind of fixed or improved performance. So I retested -te everything to see how much it actually gained. The 285K was retested on the ASUS Z890 Apex with the more recent BIOS version 1501 and I was also testing it with 8133 C40 on the memory. But in my opinion, you know, if the CPU has a better memory controller, it should be allowed to make use of it. But before we jump to the benchmarks, we will first take a look at the system to check power consumption, temperature, clocks, just how the CPU behaves. I tested the 9950X 3D on this X870E Hero motherboard with BIOS version 1203, which is pretty recent. I think it's the newest one available. Even though AMD supplied BIOS 9951, which is like two months old, that's why I decided to, to just run something yeah, more recent and the memory was running 6000 C30. And then accordingly, the Infinity Fabric clock at 2000 megahertz and the memory controller clock at 6000. Now running Cinebench R23, we will see very good temperatures under load, also very even, like not a big difference between CCD1 or CCD2. Both are at about 70 degrees Celsius under load, which is great. Very similar to the 9800X 3D. And if we run Cinebench R23 again, you will see package power draw is 200 watts which is high, but also expected with this amount of cores. And I guess if you unlock this, it can be even higher, but this should be the platform power limit or something like this. So that's definitely power limited at this state by AMD. In the past, I often had issues, for example, with the 7950X 3D that, for example, a game wouldn't run on the 3D Vcache CCD, but with the 9950X 3D, I didn't have that issue at all. So everything was very smooth for me in my testing. No time for the benchmarks and I tested the 9950X 3D versus its predecessor, the 7950X 3D, also versus the 9800X 3D, which is basically the strongest or fastest gaming CPU that you can currently get, and also versus the Intel 285K. In Cinebench R23 multithreading, the 9950X 3D is 17% faster than the previous 7950X 3D. However, it's consuming 200 watts under load, which is an increase of 39%. This means that the efficiency 
efficiency of the new CPU decreased. However, the 9950X 3D is still more efficient than the Intel 285K, which is leading the chart. That means that AMD could not quite beat Intel in this case. The 285K is only 2% faster, but also consumes 12% more power. I could observe a very similar behavior in 3D Mark CPU profile benchmark, where still the 7950X 3D is very efficient. The 9950X 3D is only 15% faster, but it also consumes 64% more power. In this kind of scenario, Intel is very strong with the 285K that also only consumes 148 watts. So it's quite efficient. Intel definitely benefits here with their e-core design. With its 16 cores, the 9950X 3D can also be used for a broader field of applications. And I was also thinking of my own case, just rendering YouTube videos in 4K. That's why I decided to test exactly this, exporting one of my YouTube videos in 4K and then measure the time those different CPUs need. However, you can quickly find out that there is only a small difference between the CPUs because in some applications like that, a lot of work is also done on the GPU, which in my case was the RTX 5090. Both 7950X 3D and the newer 9950X 3D with their 16 cores are quite a bit faster than the 8 core 9800X 3D. The 285K is again the fastest in this test, but overall I would say you can just use all of them, it won't make a big difference. You could now get the impression that the Intel 285K is a very strong CPU, which it is, but it also can be very slow. And that's mostly the case in some of the gaming benchmarks. And that's where we will get to now. In Cyberpunk 1080p and Ultra settings, the 9950X 3D is 8% faster than the previous 7950X 3D. However, you can see a big increase in power consumption by 45%. Compared to the 9800X 3D, the performance only increased by 1 to 6%. The 285K is also delivering quite good results if we only look at the 1% lows with 114 FPS. However, then looking at the average, it is 11 FPS behind the 9950X 3D. In Star Wars Outlaws, both 9950X 3D and Intel 285K are very similar in terms of performance. However, the 9950X 3D consumes 29% more power. That is surprising. I didn't expect to see that, that Intel is better in terms of power consumption versus AMD. It is important to say though that all the average FPS are in the same level with all the four CPUs. Only the top two and the bottom two differ a little bit when it comes to the 1% low FPS, which also means that we're probably running somewhat into the GPU limit, which honestly I didn't expect running 1080p and an RTX 5090. So far the 285K also good performance and it's good to see that Intel definitely improved over time. However, the 9950X 3D so far seems to be more consistent and in the following benchmarks it will get quite a bit worse for Intel. One example is Counter-Strike 2, where you see that the 9950X 3D is by far the strongest gaming CPU you can buy. It also surprised me how it could improve its performance over the 9800X 3D. So if we look at the 9950X 3D and the 1% lows, we see about 355 FPS. That is 12% more than the 9800X 3D. And if we compare those 1% lows now with the 285K, it's quite far behind. I could observe the same kind of behavior in the new Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, where the 9950X 3D is again very strong, but also very comparable to the 9800X 3D. But if we compare it to the Intel, Intel is more than 20% behind. Also, if we look at the power consumption, it would just make a lot more sense to get the 9800X 3D. Very similar performance, but more than 25% less power draw than the 9950X 3D. As expected, the 9950X 3D is the strongest gaming CPU that you can currently buy. It doesn't mean though that it's the best choice, because in a lot of the cases, or I would say most of the cases, the 9800X 3D will just perform as well in gaming, but it will be cheaper and it will also usually consume less power. While Intel definitely improved the 285K and its performance over the previous months, at least in my personal opinion, it's still not enough for a recommendation, simply because it's not as consistent as AMD. AMD consistently always performs better than Intel. And also if you look at the bigger picture, you know, with the platform as well, AM5 will just live longer. And 1851 will probably be dead after this single CPU. And there might be the case that the 285K can beat the 9950X CD in a game, but there are also the cases where the 285K is a lot worse than AMD. 
With this, the 9950X 3D overall is the best, I would say, universal CPU that you can use for both gaming or other like multi-core applications if you have them. If you don't have any kind of multi-core applications, it's typically absolutely fine to just get the 9800X 3D for gaming because you will, you will save power, you will save money, the CPU stays colder, yeah, you probably won't really benefit in most of the games. But I'm already looking forward to delete one of these CPUs and then test how much we can push this with overclocking. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.